In this video, we are going to introduce the topic of functions. So, functions is an area of algebra in which we are dealing with equations which are rules. Now, now how this is different to other equations is quite simple. There is one rule for all functions. For every um, function, we must have a single answer when we put in a number. So when we're dealing with our functions, we've got, first of all, what we call our inputs, which is the set of all numbers going into our function. And then we have the outputs, which is the set of all numbers we get as answers from our, from our inputs. All right. Now the rule for functions is for every input there must be only one output. And that is the cardinal rule of a function. If you have an equation for which I could sub a number in and get two or more answers, yeah, it might be an equation, but it's not a function. Okay? So, um, let's look at a simple example of a function. Okay? So, we'll say multiply by 2 and add 3. All right? And I'm going to say that my inputs are the numbers 1, 3, and 5. So my first rule is multiply by 2. And then my second rule is add 3. So my input is 1. So 1 times 2 is 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. So 5 is my first output for the input of 1. Next input, 3 by 2 is 6, 6 plus 3 is 9. And then 5 by 2 is 10, 10 plus 3 is 13. So my set of inputs for this function is 1, 3, and 5. And my set of outputs is 5, 9, and 13. All right, now... Often, however, in algebra, we would rather not write big boxes like this. We want to use algebra to simplify this, okay? So how I could simplify this function is, and I'm going straight into my notation here. I have my function. I'm going to call it f, f for function. Now, how you know we have a function is we use this notation. We have an f and then an x in brackets. And we read that as f of x, okay? x represents all my inputs f of x is the function. This function was multiply by 2 and add 3. So whatever my input is, x, I'm going to multiply that by 2. So we write that as 2 times x, or just 2x, plus 3. And this is the general equation for this function. Okay? So let's try another one. Okay? Um... We're going to say multiply by 3 and subtract 2. And I'm going to list my three functions. I'm going to say 4, 7, and 11. So here is my three inputs, sorry, my, this is my three inputs. So my first input, 4 by 3, 4 threes are 4, 8, 12, 12 minus 2 is 10. 7 by 3, 7, 14, 21, 21 minus 2 is 19. 11 by 3, 11, 22, 33, 33 minus 2 is 31. 
And there we go. So my inputs were 4, 7, and 11. And my outputs were 10, 19, and 31. And this function here, f of x, I could have, instead of using words, rewrote it as multiply by 3, so multiply my input x by 3, and subtract 2. Okay? So that's the basic bit of our functions. Okay? Now, and each time, you'll know, I have only one output from my input. So, I know what well, this is a correct function. Okay? Let's think of an example of an input of, a, of an equation where you might not get only one input. Okay, um, f of x is equal to the square root of x. So this is my equation. So I have my inputs: four, nine, sixteen, and square root. Square root of 4, 2, square root of 9, 3, square root of 16, 4. And you say, well, sir, for each of my inputs, I have one output. So this is a function. However, we've forgotten a very important thing here. The square root of 2 is not just 2. 2 by 2, and remember, folks, brackets means multiply is equal to 4. But that's not the only number which, when multiplied by itself, gives me 4. Because, see... Minus 2 by minus 2, 2 by 2 is 4, minus by 2 by minus 2 is also 4, because minus by minus is a plus. Likewise, 3 by 3 is 9, minus 3 by minus 3 is 9. 4 by 4 is 16, minus 4 by minus 4 is also 16. So my answers were actually 2 or minus 2, 3 or minus 3, 4 or minus 4, which means it is not a function because I had two outputs for one input. Okay? So next of all, we want to look at this a bit more detail. We have a few more terms that we want to look at in this basic introduction. And this introduction is literally just about getting a rough idea of what a function is and the words we use to describe a function. Okay? So, I've already talked about inputs and outputs, but we have another name for our inputs. First one is the word domain. Now, the domain is the set of all inputs. Okay? And then we have the range, which is the set of our outputs. And next I want to talk about another thing is a way we can demonstrate these. We have what's called a mapping diagram. Where we draw a circle. And then we draw another circle. And we can map one to one our inputs to our outputs. So say 2, 5, 15. I'm just making these numbers up. They don't actually matter. 3, 7, 22. And you draw an arrow from your inputs to your outputs. Now remember, folks, I'm just making this up. These numbers aren't actually correct. But this is what we call a mapping diagram. Now, mapping diagrams are very useful because at a glance, they can tell us straight away if something is a function or not. So in this example here, you can see for every input, there is only one output. So this is definitely a function. But let's look at another mapping diagram. Now this is not a, this here is not a function. Why? Because in this mapping diagram, A goes to 1, but A also goes to 2. So we have one input and we have two outputs. Therefore, it is not a function. Okay? But let's look at another example.
Is this a function? Yes or no? Does each input map onto only one output? Yes, it does. Now, you might say, but sir, B goes on to 3 and C goes on to 3. I don't care. That actually doesn't matter. All that matters is that B only maps to 3 and C only maps to 3. The fact that two inputs have the same output is okay. All that matters is one input equals one output. So, yes, it is a function. Now, you might say, oh, but what about 2? Nothing maps on the 2. That's okay. Now we're getting on to our new word. And this is our last word we're learning about in this video, which is the codomain, which is the set of all possible outputs. And what do we mean by that? Every number in this circle here is a possible output. But in this specific example, there's only two outputs, one and three. Why are these the only... Because they're the only ones that map onto inputs. Two doesn't map onto any of these inputs, but it is a possible output. So if, we, if we'd basically had another input here that could have mapped onto two, but we didn't include the correct input for the output two. Okay? So we have codomain. So in conclusion, we have our inputs. Numbers going in. We have outputs, answers to our numbers. Okay, the rule, which is one input, one output. For every input, there can be only one output. We have the word domain, which is the set of all inputs. We have the range, which is the set of outputs, and then finally the codomain, which is the set of all possible, and this is the important word here folks, possible outputs. Okay, so there is our introduction to functions. I hope this helps you all. Likewise, as always, keep up the good work. If you have any questions, email me or talk to me in class, and I shall talk to you all soon. Okay, thanks everybody.